Hello everybody. Hi, welcome. This is Patty Bennett. Today we are continuing on our weekly live card making and crafting series on Fridays. So if you're joining live, you have found me on Friday, January 19th on Facebook. If you are watching a replay, you're probably on YouTube, maybe on my blog, or maybe even the Facebook replay. So welcome wherever you are joining in from. And we are going to be making and looking at and learning tips for making these beautiful cards featuring the Stampin' Up! Gold Foiled, aren't they pretty? flower cards and envelopes so you can leave them plain but as you can see I've gussied them up a little as my grandmother would have said so we are going to be looking at tips and things that you can pull in and combine with these and we are going to make I think three cards together I forget how many I think that's what I have over here to make with you maybe four uh, we'll see we'll see how the hour goes right <laughs> So do me a favor, if you're joining live, could you please say hello, and I will watch the chat over here, and I will make sure that we are we look good, and we're, um, maybe you can give me a thumbs up or a heart if it sounds good, and it looks good, and you can hear me, and all the good things. If you're watching a replay, skip ahead just a minute or two while we get all situated, and we make sure that everybody can see and hear. So, hey, I see Rosie and Patricia, Margaret, Christine, Carol, Anne, Mary, Heather, Connie. Hello, everybody. How are you all today? Oh, snowy Pennsylvania. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hey, Patricia. Welcome, everybody. So glad you're here. Hello, Linda in Manitoba, Canada. Thank you all for letting me know that it's all going well. Thank you so much. So we're just going to start in about 30 seconds. I think we are just at the top of the hour, and then we will go ahead and start live. Oh, thank you, Patricia. Thanks for letting me know. Fabulous. We have two Patricias on here, plus me. That makes three. <laughs> hey, Susan. Hi, Sheila in Kentucky. Hi, Kathy. Welcome, everyone. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Hey, Susan. So let me introduce myself. My name is Patty Bennett. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I blog at pattystamps.com. If you missed it, this past week I did post that I surpassed 6,000 blog posts at pattystamps.com. Can, can you even like wrap your brain around that? Because to me, it was just a number, but the more I thought about it, I was like, whoa, 6,000? That's a lot. <laughs> a lot of years I've been sharing my love of crafting with you. If you haven't already popped over to my blog at some point, I would love to have you do that when we're done here with the live. And if you need catalogs or you need to shop for these products, if you don't have a demonstrator, you can do that all on my blog. There are shopping links, there are request a catalog link, and all the things are there. The products that we're using today are from the Stampin' Up! mini catalog that just came out on January 4th. So the cover looks like this. And the products we are using are in this Forever Love suite. So we're going to use the paper. We're going to use the gold cards that I just showed you a minute ago, the embellishments. And uh, I think those are the products out of this suite. We're using some other things, but those are the products out of this suite. We're also using the paper butterflies, which if you tuned in last week, remember we did the perennial lavender cards with the butterflies well they were on my desk and I had to keep using them so we are you can see I've added butterflies to everything I'm currently in butterfly mode and then at the end today if you want to stay tuned I am going to show you the color combination that I used that completely surprised me and I'll give you a little hint I was using the Color Buddies 
I, I have posted this before. This particular graphic you can see is for my Love to Stamp group. Our current January prize patrol has to do with creating projects using Color Buddies. But I have posted this chart on my blog previously, and I can post it again if you missed it. But I used a Color Buddy on here on these cards that totally blew my mind and so I am going to show you that at the end because I did not think it was going to look good at all but it turned out amazing so oh thank you everybody I'm so glad that you are liking the cards thank you oh thanks Mary she says I'm having a Patty Bennett day watching your videos well that is so sweet of you thank you for joining live today Awesome, Christine. I'm glad you had a wonderful catalog launch. Awesome. Thank you, everybody, for joining. So what I did at first with these cards, like I showed in the beginning, this is how they come. They are printed like front and back, but white in the middle. I'm a little perplexed why they're not vanilla in the inside, but that's okay. I mean, I, I don't know. Does that perplex anyone else why the front back and envelope are vanilla and the inside is white just just wondering why they elected to do that it's fine just wondering why so anyway this is how they come and look at this absolutely gorgeous detail on the envelope I'm going to show you a really easy way to kind of dress that up just a tiny bit and I thought, you know, you can use these cards as is. You can add a die cut and a greeting or a ribbon or whatever you'd like. But you know me. I have to try other things. So the very first thing I did was grabbed my Cherry Cobbler ink pad. And I made, I thought I made three. I don't know what happened to the other one. Well, anyway, we'll... Maybe we'll uncover it as we craft today. So I grabbed my Cherry Cobbler ink pad and my blending brush. And we're going, I'm going to show you how I did these backgrounds. But I just want to kind of give you the overview of where we're headed here today. So, uh-oh, did I freeze? Robin said, did I freeze? Um, can anybody let me know if, if it's all okay? Or did I, I'm not frozen on my end, but... You know, it's possible because things happen. Hey, yeah, okay. Thelma says they should have been vanilla. Hi, Nedra. Happy Friday. Um, okay, everybody else is saying it's okay. All right, I'm going to continue. So, I, although I will just say this. Um, let's see, who had asked that? Robin. So, I don't know. Robin, if you're back in, I'll just say this, that yesterday I was watching Tammy's live and it kept freezing for me and I had to keep logging out and coming back in, but it was only me. So I think things just happen. But anyway, okay, back to the card. So I'm going to show you how I used the blending brush to add some color to the background and to the butterflies. And then look, here's a little hint. I just added some there when I had extra ink on my brush. And then there, here's a tip. I decided, well, if you wanted to stretch this pack of cards a little further, you can cut this in half and basically have two card fronts. So if you have extra envelopes and, you know, as a card maker and a crafter, I can't tell you how many hundreds of extra envelopes I have. So that was not a problem. <laughs> I decided, well, I'm going to try cutting a couple of these in half and just making card fronts. So you can see what I did here is I cut it with the deckled rectangle die, layered it onto another deckled rectangle die, and then onto a card of cherry cobbler, a base with cherry cobbler. And I put another die inside so you could write in there and I had one extra butterfly left on my table so I stuck it in there. So this is kind of like two tips in one. You can stretch your card fronts uh, or your cards by making two card fronts. And then I'm going to show you a different tip about just coloring the flower centers with the brush. So there's an, another tip for you. So those were the first two I made. And I was just going to keep going. But then I decided, oh, well, we need other colors, right? So I got out Misty Moonlight. And I did sort of the exact same idea with blending in the background 
and coloring just the, the flower centers. And I did it with Misty Moonlight. And I was like, okay, I've just opened a can of worms here because this is amazing. And I bet you, you could do almost any color that you want. <laughs> so uh, the red and the blue, okay, I was, okay, I'll just tell you this. When I did this, I was going to have today's video be vote for red or blue. And I was like, nope, I can't do that because I'll probably be flagged because you know how in, let's just say, in the political world, red and blue. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not what I was after. I was just saying like cherry cobbler or misty moonlight. So I kind of scratched that idea. That's not what we're doing today. We're not actually, you know, voting, so to speak. We're just playing with color. <laughs> <laughs> so then I glanced over and I saw, let me just bring this back in for you, that the DSP in this Forever Love Suite has Moody Mauve. And I have not used Moody Mauve enough. So I was like, hmm, okay, I think I am going to grab Moody Mauve and the... um. I was going to call this pecan pie. What's wrong with my brain? Uh, pretty peacock. And so I thought, well, let me grab those and let's see about making some cards with those colors. So here's Moody Mauve in the background on those gold cards. And then the Moody Mauve designer paper from that pack. I was like, okay, look, we're on a roll here. I could hardly stop. I kept making and kept making, and I love this one. I think this one is just, just gorgeous with the pretty peacock. So I started doing that, and then I was thinking about the color buddies. So remember I told you that I'm going to give you uh, kind of my shocking reveal later, but I'll show you this one that I used with color buddies. So this is Garden Green granny apple, and lemon lime. And I thought, look, that just gives it a whole new look. I added the daffodil delight. I added some Tahitian tide. So I'll show you some tips about doing that. And I just thought, oh my gosh, this is endless with what we can do, right? So I thought, I'm just going to make like 50 of these. So I went to pull out, you're going to laugh. Hang on here. I went to pull out all my packages of what I thought were these, and I realized I had purchased 10 packs of these instead of these. <laughs> these were in the holiday catalog. They are carrying over. Yes, they are still gold foil, but they're not the floral. So now I have 10 packs of these to figure out something extra to do with those. But anyway, I put in an uh, emergency order. Do any of you ever put in emergency orders? I'm a little bit famous for that. So I put in an emergency order for more packs of these so that I can keep going and play with new colors. I kept a few so that we can play today, but I was like, really? I was so in the mood to make like 50 more all different. But anyway, okay. Yeah, <laughs> Peggy, right. Oh, no, is right. <laughs> I know. Um, let's see. I I just thought I have not used Moody Mob at all. Yes, Peggy, I really have not used Moody Mob much at all. So I'll show you that and show you how pretty and how easy it is. Let's go quickly here because we've already had some time pass and I haven't even made anything with you yet. So let's get into this. Let's do this. So first we'll just go ahead and I'm going to show you this card, how to, how to just easily add color. And this can be any color. I'm going to go ahead and do the cherry cobbler. And you want to protect your work surface, of course. You can work on your grid sheets or your glass mat, whatever you'd like. I tap my brush to get color. And then see how dark and blotchy that can be? That's why I always start on my scrap paper. And I am very lightly 
coming up from the corner and I just keep going and going and going until it's basically running out of color. And I'm not pushing. I'm just letting basically the weight of the brush add the color. Okay, so I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to darken this corner, but then I'm going to kind of quickly, uh-oh, I just, well, that's all right. I added more color than I wanted to, but really that's not a problem. Um, I wanted to kind of come up here and get it to pull a little more color up higher, but that's okay. It worked. It worked. It's fine. It's so pretty. And this, really, this works with any color. It's so pretty. I hope this shows well on the camera because in person, you have to trust me, this is beyond gorgeous. I mean, just so, so, so pretty. Now, what you want to do before you actually work with this card is you want to take like a Kleenex, an old rag, a paper towel, whatever, and you just want to wipe because the color is sitting on top of that gold. This is basically like if you had taken the time to stamp an image and emboss it in gold and you would need to wipe off the color before you you keep going. Just wipe it off of the um, the gold foiled part. So that's that background. Okay. We'll keep, we'll keep going with it in a minute, but while I have the supplies out, I just wanted to show you how easy it also is if you just wanted to do the flower centers, or sorry, the flowers. I start in the center, and as I add ink, I am letting it sort of fade so that it's darker in the middle. And you don't have to. That's just how I like to do it. And you can see, I've got quite a bit of ink on here. You can just keep going. On one of them, I, and I'll admit it, it's in the garbage right now because I didn't like it. I used my blending my, excuse me, my Stampin' Blends markers, and I colored all the leaves. And it was, for me, it was like just way too much. I, I just went, uh, no, I don't like that. And so I, I didn't, I just, I actually trashed it. <laughs> but this is how you can super quickly just put some color on here. If you want to take time, color in the leaves with any kind of markers or whatever, you can do that. I just sort of liked it. I thought just the flowers were just beautiful. So that's that background. And I am going to wipe this off just so I don't touch it later and get ink on something else. So there's your two basic ideas of what I did. And you can do variations. You could go around the edge. You can die cut this like I did here. So lots of different things you could do with it. But the, those are kind of the two basics. But then when you have ink still left on your brush, this is so pretty to just add a little bit to the flap. And I just think whenever somebody gets this in the mail, they're just really going to squeal. So isn't that beautiful? Just a little color on there. And if you kind of planned it, you could take, let's say you have a white card front, a panel, Look, if we did this, let's see what that looks like. It's kind of a two for one where you could color your envelope flap, but let's see what it looks like. I think this is going to be really pretty. Yep. Oh my gosh. Look at that. 
Now I have something that I can use on a card front or the inside. That would be pretty on the inside, wouldn't it? So when you have your darker card base like this, if you put something like that on the inside, oh, there's a, I think that's pretty brilliant. There's a great thought. <laughs> so, okay, we'll just keep going, right? Keep going. So many pretty things. So same idea if you wanted to make the same basic cards with any other color. I showed you a little minute ago that we did it with Misty Moonlight, but I think you get the idea. Oh, um, then we need to add butterflies. So these butterflies, as I showed you last week, come in a sheet, five butterflies on a sheet, eight sheets in a pack. And if you remember... I mentioned that my preference is to keep them on or in, I should say, in the sheet. And for me, it's just easier to add the ink while they're still there. They seem to not want to like wrinkle wrinkle up. I don't know if that's really the right word, but but they don't get messed up or they don't kind of get folded or whatever. And this way... They're kind of protected. I guess that's the word to use. And then I'm going to show you one more tip on here on the butterflies. So hang with me here. Okay, I'm going to add a little color down here. And let's do, I want to do one of these. So I'm just going to go kind of in the middle lightly. This one's not going to have a ton of color. Just a little bit of shading. Okay, now let me show you this trick. Trick? I don't know if it's a trick. It's a tip. I used a Stampin' Right, sorry, Stampin' Blends marker. This is Cherry Cobbler. You could do any sort of coordinating color here. And I did the antenna and just a little bit down the middle for the body. Looks a little funky right there, but wait till we pop it out and you put it on your project and it's really cool. I know it kind of looks like a kindergartner right now, but, but watch. those are and I just keep looking at this piece and I'm thinking like wow you could just look at that anyway anyway <laughs> thanks Aru thanks Claire thank you Thelma Beth thanks Robin hey thanks everybody oh my goodness I'm missing um this is the large blending brush but you can use either one uh that was Peggy who asked that yeah you can use either one this is the large one Okay, so I just wanted to use some of these supplies that I had die cut to show you. Just finishing off one of these cards. So this one is completely uh, dry. I, I think I'll let this other one that we that I just did a few minutes ago. I'm just going to let that one sit and make sure that it's completely dry before I use it. And let's just do, let's kind of, I kind of like what I had done before. And I'm going to show you these parts and what I did. Maybe that one. So what I did was a, a very simple kind of a formula just so that I could make a lot of these fairly quickly. I didn't want to think too much about each and every one. And so I just used my, let's see, how about, about like that. I just used my foam sheets and I cut 
you know, I like these better than like 12 dimensionals. I just don't enjoy picking. Oh, this is the back. I just don't enjoy picking off a whole ton of dimensionals. So I like these foam adhesive sheets. So we'll just do some pieces of that. And if you kind of follow the same sort of idea, you can make a lot of these pretty quickly and just try out a bunch of colors. So the idea was two butterflies and then a greeting on top of one of those. So there was the original. Um, maybe let's see what this one looks like. I can't thank you enough. Let's do that one since we already did that one. So let's just do a different one. And then since I popped, oh wait, here's my glue, sorry. Since I popped up that cherry cobbler piece, I'm not going to pop up anything else. I'm just going to do everything else flat on there. And I found that just a little bit of glue on the body and just sort of a couple of spots on the wings, that's really all it needed to keep it held down. Pretty, 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 pretty. And then let's see, where are my gems? Here they are. So what I found since the gold foil, the gold floral foil on the back um, is pretty busy. I didn't want, I don't know, didn't want to take away from all that, but I wanted to add a little something. And these iridescent foil gems with the gold flex really seemed like the absolute perfect embellishment for these. And I used the larger one on the larger butterfly head, smaller one on the smaller butterfly head. And then I was going to add more, but I thought, I don't know, this just, just, this is really pretty. And it just sort of seemed like enough, but I'm going to be daring and I'm just going to add a couple more on this one. Just, just because there's so many in this package and why not? <laughs> why is it always so hard for me to place the third one just be done with it just put it on there and be done <laughs> so iridescent foil gems they are also in this new catalog so there you go a basic card design with a larger die cut a smaller die cut with the greeting the two butterflies and some gems and that's really all you need to make these turn out so pretty so that is kind of your basic design same idea no matter what color you want to try and then I wanted to do a couple of these with you with the forever love designer paper <coughs> excuse me i don't know how i can be so talented and just be talking and like choke myself i don't know i really don't know and for this one the peacock gems, the petal pink and pretty peacock gems. These are perfect. So I'm going to keep those out. So this paper, I pulled out a few of the designs. I pulled out the mauve because like I said, I hadn't used mauve in a while. So I wanted to do that. And I die cut some of the pretty peacock, just different shapes. D wasn't sure what I wanted to use. I like this one, might use this one today. And then this pattern, I was like, oh, look at that. If we cut strips, look how pretty that is. Just put a, a little strip on the inside. And I was going to cut back the front so that you could see it, but I thought, no, it's just kind of fun when you open it up and you see a surprise. 
So this one has no ink blending on the background. I thought the paper was just sort of enough by itself. But this one, these two, do have the moody mauve in the background. So I am going to show you how pretty that is with the moody mauve. Ah! Okay, just... I wish I had a dollar for every time I've told my husband I need more space. I just need more space. So we're going to do Moody Mauve. Oh, hang on. There's like a whole bunch of questions. Um, Christine, I don't know. I don't think they get caught in the mail, but I hope not. Yes, foam sheets. Polly, foam sheets. I can't tell you how great these foam adhesive sheets are. Uh, let's see. I'm glad you're liking the tips. Thank you, everybody. Let's see. Thank you, Terry. Okay, I think we're good. So we are going to do Moody Mauve. Let me just double check. And I'll just show you how pretty this is. And then if you joined in late, I am going to show you the color that surprised me the most that I really didn't think was going to look good. And I think it turned out to be my favorite. So stay tuned because we're going to do that one next. So the reason I tried the Moody Mauve was because of the designer paper, the Forever Love designer paper. Since that had the Moody Mauve, I thought, well, we are going to do that. And I liked it. I thought it was beautiful. I think this turns out really lovely with the vanilla. You could go around the four edges. You can do what I'm doing here, come in from the two corners. You could do it from all four corners. You can do whatever you would like. I'm going to wipe this off. And this really does make the gold pop because it takes the ink away off of the gold. So then the gold really pops once you wipe off. See that extra ink there? So we have a background to work on. And I think, I just wonder, I just want to see. That would be a pretty mix. I was going to do the mauve on the, oh, I think I like the mauve on the mauve. But that would have been pretty. That'll be a future card when the rest of mine arrive. <laughs> I can't believe that, that I thought I had 10 packs of these. Oh my gosh. I just, like, really? <laughs> uh, this die is the Scalloped Contour. One of my absolute favorites. I will be in mourning if Stampin' Up! retires it because this is my most used set of dies is Scallop Contour. But I am really loving, uh, hang, what's the name of it? It's not the perennial one. Hang on, I'm going to grab it in just a second. I think it's, oh, I don't even know. I'll grab it in just a minute. It's my my new next favorite. It's this one. Does anybody remember the name of that? That's probably faster than me trying to look it up. So we're going to add that. And then I had these from, wait, what is on my hand? Hang on. I don't know what. If this is ink or glue, hang on, let me just wipe it off. Okay, so Sharon is asking about the glass mat. Yes, I used it last week. You probably saw me do that. I used the glass mat for the ink blending on these butterflies. The problem with the glass mat is my phone, which it's right up here, that I am using to film with, does not like the, ref not the reflection. It doesn't like the grid of the glass mat. It, it has a hard time focusing on the project. 
so I am not going to be using it for videos. Uh, I wish it wasn't a problem. I, the, my phone's really old, and we are due to get new phones soon. So I am going to be getting a new phone. And hopefully when I get a new phone, then it will, um, the glass mat with the grid, hopefully will be a little better. But that's why I'm not using it. But I much prefer the ink blending on the glass mat to answer your question. But that's why I'm not using it. So I'm looking for four here. I couldn't remember the name of this. Thoughtful Moments Hybrid Embossing Folder. You probably saw me do previous videos on that with uh, all the different ways that I used the brayer and coloring them and die cutting them. So I had some of those pieces just kind of sitting around and I thought, oh, I think I'll add them to these. And I really wish I would have added uh, ink to them first. Um... You know what? Let's try one. My brayer's right here. Let's just see. I don't know if this is going to turn out okay after the fact, but let's just see. I'm just going to put some Moody Mob on my brayer, and I'm just going to try to lightly go over this. It seems better if you do this when it's actually in the embossing folder. This is kind of, I'm not, I'm not super loving the way that that came out. It works way better if you do it prior to popping all these out. Um, yeah, well, we tried. I tried. Anyway, anyway. Okay, enough of that business. So that's a no. But um, I love these little die cuts. I think they're beautiful. I was thinking maybe, maybe layering like that and then some butterflies in the blue, in the peacock. So I think that's how I'm going to finish off this card. But if you don't have this or you don't care for those, you can stamp on them. And then I used, you can see I used my pretty peacock um, stamp and blends marker to do the bodies just like I showed you with the um, cobbler and then the pretty peacock gems to add a you know pick up the peacock so that's how I finished off these and let's just look at those so those were the ideas that I had come up with using the Forever Love paper. It's so pretty. And I love that you can just mix and match those designs. Um, hi in Australia. Hi, Sue. We're just about done. So um, you can watch the replays if you wish. Thank you, Sheila. Thoughtful, or Shella, sorry. I need better glasses. The Thoughtful Expressions Dies was that one that I love, which is kind of my new favorite now. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the color buddies so I can tell you the color that shocked me the most that I really didn't think I was going to like. This, like I said, is the Garden Green Granny Apple and Lemon Lime Twist. So just like I showed you with the blending brushes, I started from this corner and went up with the Garden Green, and then I went with the Granny Apple in the middle and the Lemon Lime at the top. And you can just get such a different look than those more, I'm going to call them 80s colors, because to me, the Moody Mauve and the Peacock and the Misty Moonlight to me, those are very 80s. So you can get away from that color palette and go bright. You could even do, I was going to do the orange and the yellow until, like I said, I realized I didn't have extra packs of these. So I was going to do more like a monarch butterfly look. But look, by adding the daffodil and the Tahitian Tide, doesn't that just pop this up a lot? <laughs> I think it's so pretty. Okay, so here's the one that shocked me the most. I thought, I was going to try this, Berry Burst and Bubble Bath. And I thought, well, but Berry Burst on vanilla 
I thought that's not going to look right because Berry Burst is a cool blue undertone. And to add that to the vanilla, I thought it's going to turn out brown. It's going to look awful. But I thought, you know what? How would we know if we don't try? So let me show you. Oh my gosh. So pretty. So I tried out Berry Burst and Bubble Bath. So this one has both colors, Berry Burst and Bubble Bath. And I was shocked at how this retained the pinkness. Isn't it beautiful? I thought it was going to turn into just a brown, muddy mess. And it's not. It's so pretty. And so on this one, I only just did some um, Berry Burst so you could see it with the vanilla. But isn't it gorgeous? Oh, I see some hearts. I think you like it. Thanks, Terry. She said I wouldn't have thought to do the greens and the yellows. Yeah, I wanted to just try all of the color buddies from Stampin' Up, but I, now I need to wait for the rest of my card fronts to, or the, the rest of the card bases to come because, my goodness, I ordered the wrong thing. So let's look at... You probably don't need to see me do this with the blending brush. It's the same thing, right? So you get that idea of what I did. I am going to turn around and die cut this with the deckled rectangle so that we can finish off this card because I think this is going to be gorgeous. This is so pretty. Just hang tight. One minute here. Okay, so this was the next to the biggest of the deckled rectangle. You know what? I should have centered that so I could have used this on something else. Well, okay, live and learn. All right. <laughs> So here we have the berry burst up into the uh, bubble bath. So pretty. And I just thought this would be gorgeous layered onto white. And then a white greeting. And a couple of butterflies. So we have to do one more butterfly. And I have the, can't forget, I have the Berry Burst, I think, yeah, Berry Burst Stamp and Blend so that I can add that, um, the body. This one might be too big. I don't know why. This is like my favorite one. And obviously I'm going to run out of those if I don't start using a different color. Uh, sorry, different size. So, very burst. And remember the tip with the marker, and that's really going to make these pop. So just carefully add some color to the body and then color the antenna. And this is so pretty. I love what this adds to this butterfly. Isn't that cute? Oh, maybe the bigger butterfly would have been okay. Uh, but this one's pretty big. So I think we'll just kind of adjust that. Now, what I'm wondering, let me see if I have a piece of berry burst. This one's already cut down. Oh my gosh, this might be... 
Oh, I don't like that. No, never mind. Oh, I thought I was going to love that, and I don't. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Isn't that funny how we think in our mind it's just going to be fabulous? And then, then oopsie. <laughs> All right, so this one is, is going to have a lot of white. And it's just going to have a kind of a different sort of a more modern clean look than all the fussy layers and all the colors and then let's get our foam adhesive sheets oh look at that this one's almost perfect i'm just going to space it a little bit where do i get the color buddy from oh it was from stampin up i think it might have been from world card making day i'm trying to think um, but I've posted it on my blog before. If you go to pattystamps.com and you, in the search bar, you type in color buddy, I'm sure it will pop up. I've posted it before, but I'll post, I'll try to remember to post it again. I'll add it. When I post these color buddy cards, I will post this again. And I will put it on top. I think, let's see, can I hold this and do this? I think I need a little bit of glue back here. Yeah, perfect. Okay, let's add this little one. Um, light or dark berry burst blend? Let me look. I'll look for you. Let's do that. I have been doing opposite corners, but let's just do that. Let's do just for different design. Um, this was light, but I'm not sure that it really matters. I think it's it would be okay either one. So, oh, we need embellishments. What do we have? What would work? Please hold while I look through my embellishments. Ooh, that'd be zippy. Oh, that'd be almost perfect. Let's see, what else do we have? Hmm, that may be really delicious on there. Let me see about this one. Let's see, in color pearls. Oh, wait, gold sequins. Oh, my goodness. So many choices. Let me see what this would look like. Oh, my gosh. You should see this in person. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yes. Okay, I'm not even going to... I'm not even going to entertain using those other ones. This is stunning. Oh, I hear a bunch of sirens outside. That always makes me sad because I know somebody needs help. That always makes me sad. Oh my gosh, that is so pretty. Can can you even see the gorgeousness of the pearlescence of those? It's perfect. They're beautiful. So pretty. So these were my two color buddies that I had done so far. So I will do more of those and that'll be a blog post for another time. <laughs> Um, can I use ribbon instead of butterflies? Of course you could. You can use whatever you want. <laughs> you can, yeah, absolutely do whatever you want. So those were the color buddies that I got done so far. I'll do more. Uh, here were three ideas with the Forever Love designer paper. And then this was the two ideas with Misty Moonlight. And... Here were the ideas with Cherry Cobbler. So lots of amazing ideas for these cards. And if it's not your style, just use them plain. They're just, they're beautiful, just plain. You don't have to do anything 
to them. But I think that this will hopefully give you some fabulous ideas for gussying them up, as my grandma always told me, or for just just playing with color. I'm I'm really big about playing with color. Color is my world. I love color. And you'll laugh because every single wall in our house is white. So you would think my house would be full of colored walls and it's not. But it's because I like to show off my dad's paintings and they're better shown off on plain white color in my mind. But anyway, I digress. That's like a different, um, that's a different story for another day. <laughs> Yes, Patricia, I am going to on stage in Houston. <laughs> I am so glad you like these. Give me a thumbs up or uh, let me know if you like them. And if you're watching on Facebook, I would love to have you subscribe. I mean, excuse me, if you're watching on YouTube, I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel. I am really shooting for the 40,000 subscriber mark. I'm getting really close and it would be so fun to reach that soon. And I am also striving for my $3 million in personal sales with Stampin' Up! So I'm getting close to that. I'll be posting a countdown probably starting in February. But I'm getting close to that. So just working on all my milestones while I share pretty cards with you. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. Thanks, Terry. I Thank you. I'm so glad. Um... No, I don't do live on YouTube, Diana. I've never gone live on YouTube. It's always on Facebook. So I, these are recorded and I put the recording on YouTube. So Patty Stamps on YouTube or Patty Bennett on YouTube is where you will find all of the replays. I have like, I don't know, 450 uh, replays on there. Thank you, Anne. Thanks, Dawn. Thanks, Gay. Oh, yes. Christine, you totally need these. Yeah, they are beautiful. They are fabulous. Uh, yeah, the replays are on YouTube. I don't go live on YouTube. I've never learned how to do that. This works, so I've not done lives on YouTube yet. Thank you all so much. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Go Niners. Playoffs tomorrow. <laughs> And I will see you back next week. I think we're going to be doing some Valentine goodies next week just to give you a little time to uh, work on a Valentine project. I know I'm kind of behind, but I think that's my um, that's my goal. Um, OK, Sue, you are welcome to watch the replay. OK, everybody have fun stamping and crafting this weekend and in the coming week. And I will see you all next week for another live. No, Sue, not Green Bay. Go Niners. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thank you again. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.